set the pop holes. With the ring of light from his lantern, dancing from side to side, he lurks across the yard, drew himself a last glass of beer from the barrel in the scullery, and fell in an armchair alongside Mrs. Jones. As soon as the light went out, there was a stirring and a fluttering all throughout the barn. Word had gone around during the day that old man who had hides in the whiteboard had had a strange dream on the previous night and wished to communicate it to the other animals. Comrades, yes. you have heard already about the strange dream that I had last night. Yes. But I will come to the dream later. I have something else to say first. Mm -hmm. I do not think that I shall be with you for many months longer, comrades. What? I've had a long life. I've had much time for thought. And I think I may say that I understand the nature of life on this earth, as well as any animal now living. It is about this that I wish to speak to you today. Now, comrades, what is the nature of this life of ours? Let us face it. Our lives are miserable, laborious, and short. Yes. We are born, we are given just so much food as we keep the breath in our bodies. Yes. Those of us who are capable of it are forced to work to the last atom of our strength. Yes. And the very instant that our usefulness has come to an end, we are slaughtered Kill. with hideous oh. cruelty. Yes. No animal is free. No. No. Life of an animal is misery and slavery. Yes. That is the plain truth. Yes. 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 It's awful. But is this simply part of the order of nature? No. Is it because this land of ours is so poor that it cannot afford a decent life to those who dwell upon it? No. No, it no comrades. A thousand times no. No. Why then? Why then do we continue? Because nearly the whole of the produce of our labor is stolen from us mm -hmm. by human beings. They are comrades is the answer to all of our problems. Yes. It is summed up in a single word. Mm. Man. 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 Man is the only real enemy we have. Remove man from the scene of the root cause of hunger and overwork is abolished forever. Yes. Man is the only creature that consumes without producing. Mm -hmm. He does not give milk. He does not lay eggs. Mm -hmm. He is too weak to pull the plow. He cannot run fast enough to catch rabbits, and yet he is the lord of all the animals. No. He sets them to work. He gives back to them the bare minimum that will prevent them from starving, and the rest he keeps for himself. Selfish. Selfish. Is it not crystal clear then, comrades, that all the evils of this life of ours spring from the tyranny of human beings? Yes. Yes. Only get rid of man, and the produce of labor would be our own. Mm -hmm. Almost overnight, we could become rich and free. Really? You hear that, Minimus? What then must we do? Why? Work night and day, body and soul for the overthrow of the human race. That is my message to you, comrades. Revolution! Revolution! I do not know when the revolution will come. It may be in a week or in a hundred years, but I know that sooner or later, start today. justice will be done. Yes. Fix your eyes on that, comrades, throughout the short remainder of your lives. Mm -hmm. And above all, pass on this message of mine to those who come after you, so that the future generations shall carry on the struggle till it is victorious. Mm -hmm. And remember, comrades, your resolution must never falter. No argument must lead you astray. Never listen when they tell you that the man and the animal have a common interest. No. That the prosperity of the one is the prosperity of the other. It is all lies! Yes. 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 Man serves the interest of no creature except himself. Mm -hmm. And among us animals, let there be perfect unity, perfect comradeship in the struggle. All animals are comrades! All animals are comrades! I have little more to say. I merely repeat. Remember always your duty of enmity towards man in all of his ways. Whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy. Whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend. And that's what upon four legs or has wings is a friend. And remember also that in fighting against man, we must not come to resemble him. Even when you have conquered him, do not adopt his vices. No animal shall ever live in a house, or sleep in a bed, or wear clothes, or drink alcohol, or smoke tobacco, or touch money, or engage in trade. All the habits of man are evil. Yeah. Yes. All evil. And above all, no animal must ever tyrannize over his own kind. Yes. Weak or strong, clever or simple, we are all brothers. Yes. No animal.
animals shall kill any other animal. That's That's terrible. Terrible. All animals are equal. All, All animals are equal. equal. Now, comrades, I will tell you about my dream last night. I cannot describe that dream to you. It was a dream of the earth as it will be when man has vanished. But it reminded me of something I had long forgotten. Many years ago, my mother used to sing to me an old song of which she knew only the tune and the first three words. I had known that tune in my infancy, but it had long since passed out of my mind. Last night, however, it came back to me in my dream. Really? And what is more, the words of the song also came back. Words I am certain which were sung by animals of long ago and have been lost to memory for generations. I will sing you that song now, comrades. And when I have taught you the tune, you can sing it better for yourselves. It is called Beasts of England. Beasts of England, beasts of Ireland, beasts of every land and clime, hearken to my joyful tidings of the golden future time. Soon or later, the day is coming, tyrant man shall be overthrown, and the fruitful fields of England shall be trod by beasts alone. Bright will shine the fields of England, pure shall its waters be, sweeter yet shall blow its breezes on the day that sets us free. For that day we hope must labor, though we die. Quick. 
says it, then it must be right. Honestly, Boxer, you are stupid. Why do you have to agree with everything he says? Well, he's the cleverest animal on the farm, isn't he? And so he must. Who says so? Benjamin's clever, Moses was clever, and so was Mrs. Jones. He used to let me wear ribbons all the time. Oh, Molly, stop going on your, your ribbons. You look silly in them anyway. I did not. I'm not silly. At least I'm better at reading and writing than you are, Boxer, and you, Clover. Boxer works harder than any of us. He doesn't have much time to learn to read and write. How much of your ABCs can you say, Boxer? I can get as far as I can. I can get up to M when it starts my name. I can say a bit. Well, go on then. Let's hear it. A. B. And C. There you are, C. Give him a chance. Let him have a think. A, B, C. A, B, C, A, G. Molly. Molly. Comrades. Since some of you have had difficulty in learning to read and write, we have decided to reduce the commandments of animalism to a single, easy to remember maxim. Four legs good, two legs bad. Four legs good, two legs bad. Can the sheep remember it? Four legs good, two legs bad. Early in October, news arrived that 
Jones and all his men were coming up the track that led to the farm. Snowball, who studied an old book of Julius Caesar's campaigns, gave his orders quickly. <laughs>
time. And future all questions regarding to the working of the farm will be settled by a special committee of pigs. A committee of pigs presided over by myself. The meetings will be held in private, and you will assemble once a week to be given your orders. But there will be no more debates. Minimus, you young polka, come with me. Comrades, I trust that every animal here appreciates the sacrifice that Comrade Napoleon has made in taking this extra labor upon himself. Do not imagine, comrades, that leadership is a privilege. On the contrary, it is a deep and heavy responsibility. No one believes more firmly than Comrade Napoleon that all animals are equal. He would only be too happy to let you make decisions for yourselves, but sometimes you might make the wrong decision. Suppose you had decided to follow Snowball in his moonshine of windmills. Snowball, who as we now know was no better than a criminal. He fought bravely at the Battle of the Cowshed. Bravery is not enough. Loyalty and obedience is more important and as to the Battle of the Cowshed. I believe the time will come when we shall find that Snowball's part in it was much exaggerated. Discipline, comrade. Iron discipline. That is the watchword for today. One false step and our enemies would be upon us. Surely, comrades, you do not wish to see Jones back. Very well, then. Let Comrade Napoleon's dedication be a shining example to us all. Was it not he, after all, who said, all the habits of man are evil, and above all, no animal must ever tyrannize over his own kind? If the holding of the meetings means that Jones will come back, then there must be no more meetings. And Comrade Napoleon says it, so it must be right. Oh, he does, comrades. He does. And one other thing. Napoleon has decided to go ahead with the plans to build the windmill. Now, this will require a very special effort from all of you as we will have to continue running the farm while the windmill is being constructed. It may even be necessary to reduce your rations. Rations? I can understand your surprise, comrade. But the plain truth is that Napoleon actually came up with the idea to build the windmill in the first place. And Snowball stole it only to make himself look clever in your eyes. Why then did Napoleon speak so strongly against it at the meeting? Ah, that was Comrade Napoleon's cunning. You see, he appeared to oppose at the windmill only to get rid of Snowball, who is a bad influence and a dangerous character. And now that Snowball's out of the way, we can get on with the job. That, comrades, is what is known as tactics. Tactics, comrades, tactics. Napoleon is always right. All animals will work a 60 hour week. In the future, there will be work on Sunday afternoon as well. This work will be strictly voluntary, of course. But any animal not reporting for his work will have his rations cut by half. <laughs> in addition, Animal Farm will begin to engage in trade with the neighboring farm. Not, of course, for any commercial purpose, but simply to obtain essential material such as paraffin, string and iron for the horse's shoes. Therefore, I am making arrangements to sell a stack of hay, part of the current year's bee crop, and if necessary, a percentage of the egg yield to a neighboring farm. You should welcome this contribution towards the building of the women. And have no fear. There will be no need for any of you to come in contact with human beings, which would be most undesirable. I shall take that burden upon myself and make all, all of the arrangements. Ear. Benjamin, the donkey. Ear, didn't we pass a resolution some time back about not having nothing to do with human beings and not engaging in trade? Well, I can't remember that. And about money. We aren't supposed to handle money. Look, I don't know about that, Benjamin. Would you stop being so miserable? I mean, Aren't you happier now that Jones is gone? I don't see anything to laugh at. Donkeys live a long time. None of you have ever seen a dead donkey. God gave me a tail to keep the flies off, but 
I still have no tail and no flies. I think Benjamin may be right. I seem to remember on the historic night when Major first spoke to us, he mentioned something about money. Look, Clover. I've told you before, don't listen to Benjamin. I mean, look, he's a nice enough fellow, and he gets his work done all right, but he's always grumbling around the place, looking gloomy. Yes, I know, but he's often right about things. He is older than the rest of us. He can remember everything, and he can read much better than you or I can. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, nothing really. Because I work as hard as I possibly can. I get up an hour earlier and off the work until the evening. We've got to get this windmill finished. I haven't got time to study and learn to read or write because it's what you're best at that counts. Of course, Boxer. Nobody works harder than you and we all respect you for it. I didn't mean to upset you. I believe in the revolution and everything that Napoleon says. It's just that sometimes things don't seem to happen the way Major said they would. We mustn't think about that, Clover. We must trust Napoleon. He knows best. I'm sure you're right. Penny for them, Comrade Boxer. Uh, Clover and I were just discussing Comrade Napoleon's speech on right. And what conclusion did you come to? That he's right, of course. It's just old Benjamin. You know how he is. He had seemed to think we'd pass a resolution about not engaging in, with humans or with trade, and well, Clover... Yes? I, I thought he may be right. Are you certain this is not something you have dreamed, comrades? You will only imagine we pass these resolutions because of the lies spread about by that traitor Snowball. Have you any record of them? Are they written down anywhere? No, of course they aren't. So, let us all carry on with our work and leave Comrade Napoleon to worry about these other things. Well, there you are, see? Comrade Napoleon knows best. If he thinks it's that we should sell things, then that's what we should do. Yes, I know, but I'm sure it's not a good idea to have anything to do with human beings. Major did warn us about that, and what he said then should guide us in what we do now. He isn't here anymore. And if he were, he would agree with Napoleon. That's something we'll never know. No, of course not. But Benjamin does have a good memory. Don't start about him again! Oh my, have you ever seen a dead donkey? Indeed, I'd sooner have no tail and no flies all the time. No, I don't know what he's on about. And if you ask me, all that thinking's made him a bit soft in his head. But I'm not asking you! I'm just saying I think he may be right. Oh, he may be. And you might, and you're not sure. God, you are as bad as he is. You're talking in riddles. Now, come on, let's get back to work. It'll solve everything. Oh, boxer. I've seen them. What? I said I've seen them. Who? Napoleon, Squealer, and all the other pigs. They've moved into the farmhouse. They're living there. I don't believe you. It's true, I tell you. I looked through the kitchen window and there was Squealer, sitting in a chair with his legs up on the table, reading a newspaper. I thing. simply don't believe I you. I saw it. And all the other pigs were sitting around the table, munching apples and drinking milk. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I know what I've seen. Well, I think that's going a bit too far. Don't you, boxer? Well, maybe they need the farmhouse, so... But that's not all. One of the pigeons flew past the upstairs window of the farmhouse yesterday, and you'll never guess what you saw. Go on, tell them what you saw. Well, in the big room, in the big bed, where Mrs. and Mr. Jones should sleep, Napoleon was stretched out fast asleep on the bed, snoring very loudly. There. You see? Well, how could you see all this if you flew past the window? I didn't only just fly past, comrade. I perched on the windowsill and had a good look. And saw Napoleon sleeping in a bed and heard him snoring? Yes, comrade. The window was open. 
When was this? About two hours ago, comrade. Comrade Napoleon works very hard for all of us. He'd probably been working late last night and he'd gotten tired. But he was sleeping in a bed. Well, so what? The fourth commandment. What? Yes, of course, boxer. Benjamin's right. The fourth commandment says, no animal shall sleep in a bed. So if Carmen Napoleon's doing so, it's only right that we tell the others. I don't know about that. Stop being so stubborn, Boxer. Will you leave me out of this? I don't want to get involved. I just want to get on with my work. You can talk to them, Clover, if you'd like, because no one would listen to me. You can bring it up at the next meeting. I'm not very good at speaking in front of all the others. Benjamin, it'd be best if you did it. No. They'll listen to you. If you start it off, I'll support you. And you be careful, Clover. Don't go getting involved in something which is going to upset things. Benjamin, read the fourth command. No animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets. So, comrades, you've heard that we paid on us sleeping in the beds of the farmhouse. And why not? Surely you do not suppose there was ever a ruling against beds. A bed merely means a place to sleep. A pile of straw in a stall is a bed properly regarded. The ruling was against sheets, which are a human invention. We have removed the sheets off the beds of the farmhouse and sleep between blankets. And very comfortable they are too, but not more comfortable than we need, comrades, I can assure you. With all the brain work we do nowadays, you wouldn't have us too tired to carry out our duties. Surely none of you wishes to see Jones back. Well? No, no comrade. comrade. Very well then. Because he will come back. I assure you. If we pigs are not left to get on with our work in peace and quiet. Oh, and one other thing. We pigs will be getting up one later hour in the morning than the rest of you, okay? There. You see? I told you not to meddle! Sight met their eyes. Comrades, do you know who's responsible for this? Do you know the enemy who has come in the night and overthrown our windmill? Snowball. Snowball has done this thing to set back our plans and avenge himself for his ignominious. This traitor has crept here under cover of night and overthrown our work of nearly a year. My comrades, here and now I pronounce the death sentence upon Snowball. Animal hero second class to any animal who brings him to justice. No more delays, comrades. There is work to be done. This very morning, we began rebuilding. We will build all through winter, rain or shine. We will teach this miserable traitor that he cannot undo our work so easily. Remember, there must be no alterations in our plans. This shall be carried out to the day. For long live the windmill. Long live Animal Farm. Long live Animal Farm. to be the swan that he always was. Comrades, the most terrible thing has been discovered. Jones was in league with Snowball from the very beginning. Yes. Yes. And he was trying to get us destroyed at the Battle of the Cowshed. 
Did we not see for ourselves how he attempted, fortunately, without success, to get us defeated and destroyed? Well, I do not believe that. I mean, Snowball, he fought bravely at the Battle of the Cowshed. I saw him myself. Did we not award him animal hero first class immediately afterwards? <laughs> that was our mistake, comrade. For we now know, it is all written down in some secret documents, that in reality, he was trying to lure us to our doom. Well, but he was wounded. We all saw him running with blood. <laughs> that was all part of the arrangement. I could show you in his own writing if you were able to read it. But you can't, so I won't. He would have succeeded if it had not been for our heroic leader, Comrade Napoleon. Do you not remember how just at the moment, when Jonathan and men had got inside the yard, Snowball suddenly turned and fled, and many animals followed him? And do you remember, too, that it was just at that moment, when panic was spreading, and all seemed lost, that Comrade Napoleon sprang forward with a cry of death to humanity, and sank his teeth into Jones's leg? Surely you remember that, comrades. I don't believe Snowball was a traitor at the beginning. I mean, what he has done since is different, but I believe at the Battle of the Cowshed he was a good comrade. Our leader, Comrade Napoleon, has stated categorically, categorically, comrade, that Snowball was in league with Jones from the very beginning. Yes, and long before the revolution was ever thought of. Well, that is different. And I mean, if Comrade Napoleon says it, then it must be right. That is the true spirit, Comrade. I warn every animal on the farm to keep their eyes very wide open. For we have reason to believe that some of Snowball's agents are lurking among us at the moment. And we shall seek out these traitors in our midst, comrades. They will confess to their crimes and be punished accordingly. Have you anything to confess? We have secretly been in touch with Snowball ever since his expulsion. We collaborated with him to destroy the windmill, and are planning to help him hand over Animal Farm to, to a neighboring farm. And? He admitted to us that he had been Jones's secret agent for four years. Help. 
But I'm sure I'm right this time. I can remember Snowball writing it up there. Who? Oh, S Snowball, you remember? It comes right after no animals shall drink alcohol. I I've said them to myself often enough. After what happened, I'm very confused now. Carmen Napoleon is always right, of course, but I thought we were working together, and... No animal shall kill any other animal without cause. Oh. Friend of the fatherless, found of happiness, lord of the soul of life. Oh, how my soul's on fire when I gaze at thy calm and commanding eye. Like the sun in the sky, comrade Napoleon. Thou art the giver of all that thy creatures love. Full belly, twice a day. Clean straw to roll upon. Every beast, great or small, sleeps at feast and is full. Thou watchest over all, comrade Napoleon. Had I a sucking pig, or he hath grown as big, even as a pint bottle or a rolling pin, he should have learned to be faithful and true to thee. Yes, his first squeak should be Comrade Napoleon. Napoleon, 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 Napoleon. Please inform our leader, Comrade Napoleon, that the building of the windmill is completed. It is fitting, comrades, that on this historic day we should proclaim that Animal Farm is now a republic. And announce that our leader, Comrade Napoleon, has been unanimously elected as its first president. The Order of the Green Banner has been created to mark the occasion, and President Napoleon is its first recipient. <laughs> left, 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 right, left. Comrade, sitting on this more beautiful that we can 
ever imagined. For I have seen the everlasting fields of clover, where the sun shines all known, and no cloud dares on the space. I have seen the lynx and growing ahead, and I tell you, I've seen the lump sugar hanging branches from the trees. And we're all going to close their comrades. We're going to be there together. Put the hands together, comrades. Send your hearts up. Let's go for shit, can
30% lower than it was before. Oh. Drinking water is of better quality. 45% oh. more young ones survive infancy. The average life of an animal is longer by 25%. Animal literacy is up 630%. Incidence of foot and mouth disease, foul pest, and mange has been reduced by 85% in glanders, almost completely eradicated. Production of milk is up 62.3%, of eggs 32.8%, and of wool 67.3%. distressed I am to see you like this. I have already informed Comrade Napoleon of your condition, and he has instructed me to communicate to you his deepest personal sympathy and his best wishes for a speedy recovery. You have always been one of the most loyal workers on the farm, and even at this moment, Comrade Napoleon is making arrangements to send you to a hospital nearby. The vet there can take far better care of you than we can. In a hospital? <laughs> but no one has ever left the farm before. Except Snowball. <laughs> we'll take care of him. Nonsense, comrade. Nonsense. The plain truth is that we do not have the facilities to give Boxer the treatment he must have if he's to make a complete recovery. The van will be arriving shortly to take him away. If Boxer rests for a couple of days, I know he'll be strong again. There is no argument. Our leader, Comrade Napoleon, has said quite definitely that Boxer is to go to the hospital for the good of his health. Well, if Comrade Napoleon says it, then it must be right. Thank you, comrades. Don't, don't worry about these. I am just happy that I was able to see this windmill finished at any rate. I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm looking forward to retiring. And only a month to go anyways. I'll have time to study a bit, maybe learn the rest of the alphabet. And you're getting on a bit too, Benjamin. <laughs> maybe they'll let you retire too. You can keep me company. They'll give you an apple on Sundays, just like the pigs. Fools! Fools! Do you not see what is written on the side of that van? Alfred Simmons horse water! They're sending Boxer away to be killed! Boxer! Boxer, get out! Get out quickly! They're taking you to your death! Boxer was never seen again. And three days later... Comrades, in spite of receiving every effort a horse can have, Comrade Boxer has died in the hospital. Sure. I was there during these last hours, and I can honestly say it was one of the most affecting sights I've ever seen. At the end, almost too weak to speak, he whispered into my ear that his sole sorrow was to have passed on when there was still so much work to be done. Forward, comrades, he whispered. Forward, in the name of the revolution. Long live Comrade Napoleon. Napoleon is always right. Those were his last words. Ideas which every animal would do to adopt at his own, comrades. Let the spirit of Boxer be a shining example to us all in the difficult times that lie ahead. He was a true son of the revolution. And it is all the more shameful, therefore, that his passing should have been marked by the spreading of rumors that Boxer was being taken away to the slaughterhouse. Some of you, some of you read horse slaughter on the side of the van. Oh. Jumped to the conclusion that Boxer was being taken away to be killed. Oh, it is almost unbelievable that any animal could be so stupid. Surely you know me better than that. The explanation is really very simple. The van previously belonged to the slaughter who sold it to the vet. Comrade Boxer died, receiving the best care and the best attention that money could provide. I certainly made the order that no expense was to be spared. Oh, unfortunately, it has not been possible. 
impossible oh, to bring back those amazing comrades from the intimate the intimate far. Oh. But I have ordered a large wreath to be made from the laurels to be set down and placed on Box's grave. Let us cherish his memory, comrades, and pledge ourselves to work harder for the prosperity of animal form as a tribute to him. And have no fear, comrade. For I know that even now, Comrade Boxer is cropping the grass and shit can't even rest of his weird limbs on those sunlit pastures. Really, Moses? Is he up there now? Why, yes, indeed, he is, sister. We well, are to rejoice for him. You all remember now. So we're joining that after we die. I say after we die. Screw her! Comrades, the latest report on the progress of the farm indicates that things are getting better all of the time. Annual income has increased by 225%. Sales of timber has increased to the extent that 15% of our essential materials are now purchased from outside of the farm. Working hours has um, decreased by 15%. Leisure time has increased by 12%. And time spent educating the young has doubled. It seems to me that our lives are just the same as they've always been. I try hard to remember what it was like in the times before the revolution. And then again, what it was like after Jones had been expelled. Were things better than they are now? It's so long ago. What do you mean, revolution? Who was Jones? What does expelled mean? Why are you always wondering if things are better? You are too young to know. But it's right that you should ask, and I'll tell you what I can remember. The revolution happened a long, long time ago. And before it happened, a man called Jones was after us and treated us very badly. What's a man? A man is a creature who walks on two legs instead of four. Jones lived in the farmhouse. Where the pigs live now? Yes, and he fed and looked after him. Oh, Ma, tell to you to the club. They were fine days to be sure. Oh. <laughs> Moses, no. old chap. Do you fancy coming into the farmhouse for a glass of stout? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. I beg you kindly, kind my spirit. All 
Animals are equal. But some animals are more equal than others. But what does that mean, Benjamin? We're all equal. How can some animals be more equal than others? All the talk, all the facts, all the paper and all the writing make everything so complicated. Too complicated for me to understand. I believe in the revolution and everything that our leader, Comrade Napoleon, says. Just like Boxer did and nobody worked harder than him for the cause. I remember in the early days, just after we got rid of Jones. Don't see what these damn things have to be so proud of. Uh, hello? Meg's puppy tent in the far next door. Ah, yes! Champ, keep you a moment. Ah, oh, good. I thought I might have a look over the place whilst I'm waiting. Oh. If you hang on a stick, old man, I'll give you a guided toy myself. Ah, uh, yes, I must say, it's looking an absolutely splendid nick. I noticed the windmill on the way in. Jolly fine achievement. All those animals working away in the fields and working jolly hard too. Amazing. Don't pay for them, that's the answer, eh? I can see I'll be able to pick up a few tips from this visit. Yeah, so I must say, I'm glad we're able to get together like this and talk about mutual uh, problems. It's a source of great satisfaction to me that a long period of mistrust and misunderstanding has finally come to an end. There was a time, not that I shared much sentiment, when the respected proprietors of Animal Farm were regarded not exactly with hostility, uh, but shall we say it by a certain measure of misgiving by their neighbors. I'm glad all such doubts have been dispelled. There should be no earthly reason why there should be any clash of interest between pigs and human beings. I mean, isn't the labor problem the same everywhere? Dare say your workers get a bit bullshit at times, eh? Yes, well, I know the problem. Just as you have your lower class animals, we have our what? <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more, old boy. It's true. We have had our ups and downs in the past, but hopefully all of that is now at an end. The rumors that have been spread about us have been truly shocking. For instance, it has been said that we slaughter animals unnecessarily and want to stir up revolutions on other Oh. Nothing could be further from the truth. Our soul desires to live at peace with our neighbors and to carry on trade to our mutual advantage. Mm. We own the farm. And to show our good intentions, we have decided to abolish the custom of addressing each other as comrade. Comrade. Couldn't think of how it started in the first place anyway. Our lower animals, as you rightly put it, Pilkington, work longer hours and receive less food than any other animal. We are justly proud of our achievements. So, I give you a toast. Ah, uh, thank you to the prosperity of Animal Farm. Wrong, old boy, wrong. It is only fitting that the farm is known henceforth its correct and original name. So, I give you a toast as before, but in a different form. Lift your glasses, gentlemen, to the prosperity of Manor Farm. To Manor Farm!